Join me for a journey on Queensland's premier passenger train, paralleling the Great Dividing Range and visiting some of the wettest parts of the country as we head down the Queensland coast. We'll cross massive rivers, visit the onboard cafe and take in the sunset as we head south. We'll try a unique seat you won't find elsewhere. Enjoy at-seat meals and volcanic peaks aboard a narrow gauge tilting diesel train. I'm in Cairns in far north Queensland and today we're going to be travelling on the Spirit of Queensland, a long distance train that travels all the way to Brisbane, more than 1,600 kilometres and taking 25 hours. And it's quite unusual in having a first class product called a rail bed. Rather than sleeper cabins, you're out in an open cabin, but the seat does convert into a bed. So come along and find out what it's like. Cairns is known as the gateway to tropical far north Queensland. Unusually, the railway station is located under the car park of this shopping centre. There's a booking office if you need to buy tickets. You must have a reservation to travel on the Spirit of Queensland, but the easiest way to do this is online. There are two platforms. The Spirit of Queensland uses Platform 1. The other platform is for the Coranda Scenic Railway. There's already quite a few passengers here, but the train is not yet available for boarding. You can check in luggage near the front of the train. However, this is optional, as there is space for luggage on the train. The Spirit of Queensland operates five days per week in each direction. Today, we'll traverse the north coastline and should reach Rockhampton in central Queensland about 12.30am tomorrow. All going well, we'll awake on the Sunshine Coast for breakfast before arriving in the state capital shortly after 9am. The service is operated by three tilting diesel train sets. Queensland Rail also has an electric tilt train, but that can only operate as far north as Rocky, where the electrification from Brisbane ends. The train opens for boarding. There are two rail bed cars on the Spirit of Queensland. B and C. I'm in car C. Car A is a luggage van and also a crew area. This is the cafe, which they also call the galley in Queensland. Let's take a look while it's empty. Passengers can sit in these booths to eat, although rail bed passengers have meals served directly to their seats. You'll note only rail bed passengers are permitted past this point. This carriage has 19 rail beds. There are two carriages with rail beds and three with economy seats. There's two toilets and a shower. Drinking water. There's space for luggage at one end of the carriage. Seating is in a two by one arrangement. If you're traveling solo, then the seats on the right are preferable. However, the system automatically allocates seats, but you can call Queensland Rail Travel to put in a request. This is my seat. It certainly looks comfortable. A bottle of water is provided. There's an 18 and a half inch flat screen TV. Small bags can be placed in the overhead lockers, which are similar to those found on an aircraft. This is also where you'll find a blanket and a towel. These are the controls for the entertainment system. And down here are the seat controls. There's USB charging and a headphone port here. You can fold down this cushion to make a leg rest. 
The seat table folds out from here and down here is a standard 240 volt socket. You'll be provided with headphones. And here's the food and drink menu. As it's not long after Christmas, they're offering a festive menu. We'll take a closer look when it's time to eat. You're provided with an amenity pack. It's similar to the one provided on the Spirit of the Outback. It's not a touch screen. The crew come through the carriage introducing themselves to each passenger and explaining the seat features and service. This raises the lower leg support. And this reclines the seat up to 35 degrees. There's a reading lamp. So once again, Spirit of Queensland is now ready for departure. All customers should now be seated. Any visitors on board, please step off now as these doors are automatically closed. You use this button to let the crew know when you want your seat converted into a bed. Please stand clear. We depart on schedule. Good morning customers and welcome aboard the Spirit of Queensland travelling cans through to Brisbane. My name is Kerry, I'm the passenger service supervisor on board for your journey between Cairns and Townsville. Together with passenger attendant Tanya and the rest of the onboard staff and drivers, we're here to ensure your journey is as safe and comfortable as possible. A safety video will be played and we do encourage all customers to watch this video, follow all instructions. In the unlikely event of an emergency, please remain calm and follow the instructions of the onboard staff. Many of the stops we make at stations will be brief, so please do not leave the platform area as Queensland Rail will not accept responsibility to provide alternative transport should you miss the departure. Some platforms will be too short to accommodate the whole train and it will be necessary to make multiple stops. Smoking is not permitted on this train and monitored smoke detection devices have been fitted to all areas. For your enjoyment, the train is fitted with a multi-channel entertainment system featuring a selection of movies and audio programs. We also request that you remain in your correct seating for your entire journey. This will assist us to wake you if you are leaving the train throughout the night and will also assist other customers to find their correct seating. This train is heavily booked and we are picking up a large number of customers at stations along the way. So we ask that you please only occupy your allocated seat. Very shortly, Tanya and myself will be making our way through the train, checking all rail tickets and any concession cards you have used to purchase them. So can you please assist us by having them ready for us now, along with any concession cards you've used to purchase them. So now sit back, relax, and thank you for choosing to travel with Queensland Rail Spirit of Queensland. This is the tray table. You have to press down quite firmly to get it to release. It's large and sturdy. The crew start with a tea and coffee service on departure from Cairns. I choose tea. It's served with a packet of biscuits. And we're given a sanitising wipe. We're now following the Bruce Highway which links Cairns and Brisbane. We'll see it many times during our journey. In the distance is Lamb Range. There's a foot race to this peak every year. It's called the Great Pyramid Race. Our first stop is the sugar growing town of Gordonvale. The town is now considered part of the southern urban sprawl of Greater Cairns. Gordonvale also has an unenviable history as the place where cane toads were first introduced to Australia in an attempt to control cane beetles. The toads had no appreciable impact on cane beetles, instead becoming a terrible pest themselves, outcompeting native animals.
now that we're well underway, let's take a look at the route. We'll slowly make our way down the Queensland coast, with major stops including Townsville, Mackay, Rockhampton and Bundaberg before reaching Brisbane. The Spirit of Queensland is the successor of the Sunlander, which plied this route from 1953 to 2014. Flying's fine if you're in a hurry, but take those cane fields. From the air, you'd never know there were cane cutters working there. Going down to Brisbane, the Sunlander travels through the fertile coastal plain of Queensland. The Sunlander took 31 hours. The tilt train cut travel times by about six hours and the amenities have no doubt improved, but you can still see the cane fields. Let's check out the toilet. Hello, this is one of two toilets in this carriage. Have your typical wash basin and wash made by the same company who produces the amenity pack. Standard toilet with a flush button baby change table, there's a hand dryer, a bin. There is an accessible toilet in the rail beds but it's in car B, the one in front of us. That's where the wheelchair spaces are. And how about the shower? As you can see we've got a mirror, power points and here's the shower. Body wash. We'll test the shower later. The amenity kit includes hand sanitizer, a face washer, lip balm and hand cream. Babinda is recognised as the wettest town in Australia with an average annual rainfall of more than 4,000 millimetres. There's no Wi-Fi, so the entertainment system comes in handy. You can even watch a show about this very train trip. Customers very shortly, the Spirit of Queensland will be arriving at Innisfail. The platform at Innisfail will be on the left-hand side now, direction of travel. This train will make two stops here. First stop will be to accept luggage for our customers who are joining the train. And then the train will move down onto the platform and the doors will be released. So customers may step off on the second stop. If you do step off the train, please be reminded that smoking is not permitted on the platform. When the whistle is blown, please report the train as this will indicate an immediate departure. The opening of this railway bridge in 1924 provided the final link in the North Coast Railway from Townsville to Cairns. You can stretch your legs at many of the stops. Innisfail is a major centre for the sugar and banana industries. The length of the platforms means trains have to stop a couple of times at some stations. Investing in longer platforms would help reduce journey times. Most trains are limited to 80 km an hour between Cairns and Townsville, whereas the tilt train is authorised to travel up to 100 km per hour on this section. However, the train needs to slow down quite often to cross Cane Railways, with almost 30 such crossings. In addition to Cane, this area is also home to banana plantations. The bags on the bananas help protect them against pests. 
two diesel tilt trains were built in 2003 and refurbished in 2013, with an additional new set entering service in 2014. Because the power cars are at either end, the carriages are relatively quiet. The crew take our lunch orders. Almost everyone orders the chicken. Here's the seat at maximum recline. This is different to bed mode. And you can place your feet here. Another Kane Railway crossing. Good morning customers, very shortly the Spirit of Queensland will be arriving at Tully. Platform at Tully will be on the left hand side now direction of travel. There's a friendly rivalry between Tully and the town we passed through earlier, Babinda, for the title of wettest town in Australia. Tully is home to the Golden Gumboot, as well as this very scenic railway station. The Golden Gumboot is a monument to the town's high rainfall. Tully gets its name from this river, which in turn is named after William Alcock Tully, Surveyor General of Queensland in the late 1800s. We track the Great Dividing Range as we head south. You can see it in the distance. About 30 minutes later we're in Cardwell, which will be our only clear view of the Coral Sea. The line does pass the coast again further south, but by then it will be dark. Cardwell has a muddy foreshore and the waters are noted for crocodiles, sharks and box jellyfish, particularly during the warmer months. We get glimpses of Gould and Hinchinbrook Islands. It's lunchtime. Tuscan chicken and panna cotta and a salve. There you go. Thanks. Thank you. Meals are served on porcelain trays with metal cutlery. For dessert, I chose a white chocolate panna cotta. The wine is a Sauvignon Blanc. As you can see, it's steaming hot. The chicken is tender, although the Tuscan sauce is a little bland for my taste. Dessert tastes like a raspberry version of a creme caramel. Lunch is followed by a tea and coffee service. I'm having coffee. I never cease to be amazed by the size of the rivers in this part of the world. The Herbert is the southernmost of Queensland's wet tropics river systems. This train will make two stops here. First stop will be to accept luggage for the customers who are joining the train, and then the train will move down onto the platform and the doors will be released. So customers may step off on the second stop. Although the tray table is well sized and sturdy, it's a little tight to get out of your seat while the table is deployed. With more than half of Ingham's population being of Italian descent, the town is sometimes called Little Italy. Settled in 1864, Ingham is the heart of the local sugarcane industry, where many Italian migrants came to work and has one of the largest sugar mills in Australia. Mm -hmm. 
while we're here, let's take a look at the economy seating. The economy cars are heavily loaded. Seating is in a 2x2 arrangement. If you want a closer look, see my video about travelling in economy between Townsville and Cairns. Although the tilt train is able to travel faster than most trains between Cairns and Townsville, it seems rare that we exceed 80 km per hour. The cafe closes in preparation for a crew changeover in Townsville. Good afternoon everyone. The catering staff would like to advise that the cafe located in Car D will be closing in approximately 10 minutes. However, we come to a standstill minutes later with the crew advising something has become wedged under the front of the train. The train reverses in an attempt to dislodge the item. It takes a little while but eventually they succeed. The crew say it was a trailer wheel that someone dumped on the track and it got stuck under the front of the train. This footage is taken the next day. The marks we can see here were already on the train in cans, so I'm guessing the wheel got lodged under the steel cow catcher. I believe these are magpie geese. This area isn't always as green. Here's the northbound Sunlander from years past. The crew member who's been looking after us and who used to be a Qantas flight attendant comes through to say goodbye. Very shortly the Spirit of Queensland service will be arriving at Townsville Station where the platform will be on the right hand side in our direction of travel. Finally, on behalf of the onboard staff and drivers who are leaving here at Townsville, we trust you've had a pleasant journey and hope to see you in your next travel with us. Castle Hill is a pink granite monolith in the centre of Townsville. Its walking tracks are popular with locals and visitors alike. As this is a large population centre, many people board or alight here. Townsville is the largest city in Northern Queensland and this is a crude changeover point, so there's a break of between 10 and 15 minutes here. Townsville Station is unusual in being partly located over a creek. You might notice the racetrack. This semi-permanent street circuit hosts the Townsville 500 Supercars Championship each year. Thank you very much. This river is Townsville's main source of drinking water. Ross River is also the name of a virus, with mosquitoes from the banks of this river used to isolate the virus. In the distance is Mount Stewart, home to the area's TV transmission towers. Major stops in the next section of our journey include Bowen, Proserpine and Mackay. That's the line to Mount Isa, served by the twice-weekly Inlander. I believe these wagons are used to convey minerals and metals on the Mount Isa line. We finally get some speed up. A molasses train. These wagons transport molasses from sugar mills to the port in Townsville. We pass Swampland, rich with bird life. Gyro is home to the Invicta Sugar Mill, which crushes 3.67 million tonnes of sugarcane annually, the second largest amount in the Southern Hemisphere. The crew come through to take both dinner and breakfast orders for tomorrow. Right. 
Although sugarcane burning is increasingly uncommon, it's still used in some areas to remove leaf trash that can cause rotting and kill the cane stool. Good afternoon everyone, this service is now arriving at Air Station, a platform on the left hand side. You have quite two stops today, the first is going to be for the baggage car, the second for customers leaving us in carriage E. If you get peckish between meals, you can buy food and drink from the onboard cafe. There are also hot meals available, the same as those in the electric tilt train. The Burdekin is the fourth largest river in Australia by volume of flow but it's so erratic that its discharge can reach the mean discharge of the Yangtze River or have as many as seven months with no flow whatsoever, which happened in 1923. The Burdekin Bridge we're now crossing is both a road and a rail bridge, the road being on the other side. It's one of the longest multi-span bridges in Australia and is just 46 metres shorter than the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The bridge provides a more reliable north-south link than previous iterations, which suffered major washaways. While we slowly cross this huge riverbed, let's take a look at the Spirit of Queensland's average speed. We're covering just over 1,680 kilometres in just under 25 hours. This gives us an average speed of 68 kilometres per hour. More cane railways, this time with loaded bins. I picked up this Sauvignon Blanc from the cafe. We'll have to settle for a plastic cup. Wine time. I've come back here because it's a bit more peaceful than in the cafe car. Cheers. The most frustrating thing about this train is that we get up to a decent speed and then a few minutes later we're slowing down again, I think because of track conditions. If they could just improve the track to maintain those higher speeds, it'd be a lot more satisfying and also would reduce journey times. As you can see, the cafe is popular. is going to be very brief, so all customers who are travelling for the south, please remain on board. We are still currently running around 20 minutes behind schedule and we will endeavour to make up some of this time if possible. I'll give you updated estimates of arrival times after we depart the Bowen. The Bowen station next stop, platform on the left. Bowen is located at the top of the Whit Sundays. These are mango trees. Bowen is home to the big mango. Dinner service starts just after six. I've chosen the Christmas dinner. After all, it's not every day you can have this. It's served with a quinoa salad and a bread roll. I choose the Shiraz as my drink and the Christmas pudding with custard for dessert. I definitely prefer this over lunch. It's more flavoursome and just the right temperature. A short while later, we arrive in Proserpine. The town is named after the Roman goddess of grain and harvests 
Proserpina, recognizing the fertile qualities of the region. Welcome to Proserpine, gateway to the Wit Sundays. We're running about 25 minutes behind schedule. They're hoping to make up time, but based on previous experience, I think this is unlikely. Doors closing, please stand clear. we're treated to a lovely sunset. There's another coffee and tea service, this time served with a chocolate. The carriage lights are dimmed about 7.30. We arrive at our next stop. Welcome to Mackay, sometimes called the sugar capital of Australia. The train's water tanks are filled here. We're running 25 minutes late because of track speed restrictions. Shortly, we'll pass the halfway point on our journey south. The train will reach Rockhampton in the early hours of tomorrow. Time for my bed to be made up. The crew plugs in a controller that enables the seat to change into a lie flat bed. Here's the bed once it's been made. So it's almost nine o'clock. Most of the other passengers have had their beds made, so I've decided to do the same, which means it's time to brush my teeth. I always bring a bottle of water with you because this water is not drinkable. The cabin lights have now been switched off. Hi, this is the real bed in bed mode. I'm whispering because a lot of people are already asleep and I don't want to disturb them. You might be out of here, some people are like snoring, so it might be an idea to bring earplugs. This section is cocooned, but the rest is open, so you might have feelings <coughs> about the lack of privacy. I awake in the early hours and discover we're in Rockhampton. Although there are no announcements on the train overnight, you can hear them from the platform. Rockhampton is located on the Tropic of Capricorn. The town was officially proclaimed in 1858. Rockhampton is served by six day a week electric tilt trains from Brisbane and the twice weekly Spirit of the Outback, which heads west to Longreach. Good morning. We're just coming into Bundaberg. The bridge we're traversing opened in 1891 and was the first permanent structure to span the Burnett River. Overnight, we've traveled through the port city of Gladstone and we'll be passing through the Fraser and Sunshine coasts this morning. Bundaberg is famous for being the home of Bundaberg rum. We've lost further time overnight and now are running about 45 minutes behind schedule. Radio, so it's still very early, but I'm wide awake, so we might as well jump in the shower. So it took a little while for the water to flow and to heat up, but once it got going, it wasn't too bad. Although it wasn't quite as high pressure as on the Spirit of the Outback. Once you're all showered, there's a spot to put your used towels. Seems like I'm the only person who's had a shower so far, but someone's just hopped in. Now that we have more light, here's another look at the seat in bed mode.
Author P. L. Travers was born in Maryborough in 1899. She's best known for writing the Mary Poppins series of children's books. In some parts of the world this would be called a parkway station, as the town of Maryborough is about 10 k's away. Maryborough, together with the nearby city of Harvey Bay, form part of the Fraser Coast. You could also call Maryborough the home of the diesel tilt train. This is where they were built. The crew start converting the beds back into seats from 6am. All the beds are seats again. We reach 135 kilometres per hour on this section. The cafe is extremely busy. Welcome to Gympie North, which is the northern end of the Sunshine coastline from Brisbane. And with that, it's time for breakfast. I've gone with the hot breakfast, which comprises a ham and cheese omelette served with a chipolata, a hash brown and tomato relish. It's accompanied by tea or coffee and orange juice, as well as a warm English muffin. It really hits the spot. Yum. We're now in the Sunshine Coast hinterland. Now just an update on our running time. We are currently running 40 minutes behind our scheduled time. So I just had some advice from Control. Our estimated time into Caboolture will be approximately 8.41 into Rama Street approximately 9.45. We will have made up a bit of time there and we do apologise for the delay and hope it doesn't cause you too much inconvenience. We catch a glimpse of what I think is Mount Irwa. Nambour is home to a 16 metre high fibreglass pineapple, the Big Pineapple. It dates from 1971 and is heritage listed. Just repeating the galley location, card D, including the seating area, will cease trading in 30 minutes time. Thank you and good morning. We travel through subtropical rainforest on the approach to Landsborough. We get a great perspective of Mount Tibrogargan, which is one of a cluster of 11 hills that comprise the Glasshouse Mountains. The mountains were created by volcanic activity 26 to 27 million years ago. Caboolture is the train's final stop before Roma Street. It's very much a commuter town on the northern edge of Greater Brisbane.
train goes into a non-tilt mode. Now, it doesn't affect the safety of the train. However, it does make it run a lot rougher. So if you could just remain seated now as much as possible until our arrival in Aroma Street Station. However, if you do need to move about at all to use the bathrooms or all such, um, please use the backs of the seats and ground rails and the walls to steady yourself in the event of sudden train movement. Uh, please take care with children and I'll try and keep them seated now as much as possible into Aroma Street Station. Thank you and good morning. The passenger carriages on this train normally tilt up to 5 degrees, which improves passenger comfort when navigating curves. But the tilt function has been disabled for the final run into Brisbane. So what did I think of the rail bed? Well, it's pretty comfortable. It's good to have a lie flat seat, a bit like travelling on an airliner, where it's in an open cabin. Of course, the downside is you don't get the privacy. There's quite a bit of noise during the night from other passengers and so on, a bit of snoring. I got intermittent sleep uh, because of the ambient light, the noises and so on. So it wasn't bad. It was definitely better than sitting up in economy. However, I would definitely prefer my own cabin. So how much does this trip cost? One-way fares in a rail bed between Cairns and Brisbane start at 390 Australian dollars. This includes all your meals. However, the rail beds are very popular and tend to sell out quite far in advance, so be sure to book early. Seats in economy start at 221 Australian dollars, although concession fares are also available. This system will automatically allocate you a seat. You cannot change this. However, you can call or email Queensland Rail Travel if you have a preference. Queensland Rail Travel customers receive a complimentary onward journey on the Queensland Rail City network. However, this does not include the air train service to Brisbane Airport, which attracts a premium. Construction is underway here for Brisbane's new Cross River Rail route. While suburban electric trains travel to Roma Street via Fortitude Valley and Brisbane Central, our train runs via the Exhibition Railway line, approaching Roma Street from the opposite direction. This avoids congestion on the busy Metropolitan lines. This route is also used by freight trains. Welcome to Brisbane, Australia's third biggest city. We arrived 13 minutes late, so made up quite a bit of time this morning. The train has something of a reputation for late running. As soon as we hop off, the cleaners hop on. The Spirit of Queensland will begin its northbound journey later this afternoon. So what did I think of travelling on the Spirit of Queensland, Queensland Rail's flagship train? It was a really enjoyable journey with varied scenery. The food was really good and overall it was a very pleasant trip. The rail bed was really comfortable, although personally I'd prefer a cabin. The biggest downside is the journey time, 25 hours. It's a long time to spend on a train, particularly when you can do the same trip on a plane in less than three hours. However, you don't get the scenery on the plane. So if you enjoy train travel, you've got the time and I'd only do it if I had a rail bed. I wouldn't recommend traveling sitting up in economy, then why not? If you thought 25 hours to cover 1600 kilometers was long, how about 65 hours to cover more than 4,000 kilometres. In my next video, we take a train that traverses this great continent from east to west, the Indian Pacific. It travels right across Australia between Sydney and Perth. We'll travel to the Australian outback and cross the Nullarbor. It's a once in a lifetime trip you shouldn't miss. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out. Hope to see you then.